much. So uh, what I will talk about today, so that is based on my uh, work uh, in collaboration uh, uh, with Yinju, uh, Boris Misal, and Giorgio Kristolovich. Uh, so uh, work just uh, recently pu published in uh, uh, March uh, uh, 23 PRL issue, actually made it on the cover as well. So, but, uh, so uh, in addition, I will do a lot of uh, kind of basic uh, introductory uh, talking uh, since it's a, a school uh, uh, anyway. So, uh, well, this, I don't need to spend much time on uh, this audience, so what both Einstein concept is, so the state predicted by uh, uh, both and Einstein in the uh, 20s and uh, uh, finally obtained experimentally in the uh, uh, 1995. And so, and, uh, and actually closely related, uh, uh, turns out to be, uh, dynamically systems uh, and nonlinear objects when light propagates uh, uh, either f uh, through crystals such as uh, liquid crystal or uh, or a photorefractive uh, uh, crystal or in a, a, a rubidium <coughs> uh, hot vapor and so the and, uh, BC for from start uh, people try to concentrate on states which are not turbulent. Actually, they try to avoid turbulence uh, as, far as much as possible so that you can uh, actually uh, uh, very carefully cool down uh, uh, your system to very low temperature and not to spill out your uh, uh, condensate state uh, 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 along the way. But uh, it turns out that uh, BC uh, uh, is a, a almost perfect uh, turbulence uh, laboratory because it's an optically controlled system that can be uh, set up and manipulated and, uh, and measured in many versatile uh, ways uh, which is not accessible in, uh, in just classical Navier-Stokes turbulence. So it's very interesting system. So what's the BC and optical uh, systems have in common uh, is the basic uh, nonlinear model, uh, uh, nonlinear wave equation, Gross-Pitaevsky, also known as nonlinear Schrodinger equation. Uh, written here, equation for a complex scale uh, field, uh, which you can see nonlinear. So if I drop nonlinear term, it would be just usual Schrodinger equation from quantum mechanics. So the uh, what's important for us uh, uh, is that it has two conserved quantities, number of particles and the uh, and the energy uh, represented here by two parts, which uh, the first part uh, is corresponding to this term, Laplace and linear term, and the second part is interaction Hamiltonian. So, um, uh, and why can we talk about turbulence in systems like that? Well, uh, first of all, because you know there is a direct uh, anal analog if we make a uh, we can go to fluid representation by uh, using this phase uh, uh, amplitude representation of uh, 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 condensate wave function uh, like this. And so uh, and, uh, if we will, uh, uh, also represent velocity as two gradient of phase, then we uh, after, uh, immediately obtain uh, equations that look uh, precisely like fluid equations, conservation of mass and conservation of momentum. And this equation is uh, just the uh, uh, just like 2D uh, Euler equation with uh, adiabatic index uh, gamma equal to two, with an extra term which is absent in classical Euler equation, known as a uh, 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 quantum pressure term. To be precise, it's more it's quantum enthalpy, really, you know. Um, but uh, so uh, this. Uh, uh uh, a fact then, since we have uh, a fluid representation, therefore we have a lot of uh, 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 fluid-like motions in, pa in, uh, in particular. Uh, so uh, the uh, uh, ones with, uh, random, uh, with vortices and waves, and they can be randomly moving and representing respectively vortex or, or, or wave turbulence. So... Uh, 
So the uh, this, the basic structures in systems like that. So the vortices are. So how it, it compares to usual fluid dynamics? I'm, uh, uh, so the uh, in uh, classical fluid dynamics, vorticity can be uh, uh, arbitrarily um, smooth rotation-free function, but uh, in uh, uh, quantum. Uh, a, a case described by uh, Gross-Pedersky, so the artist is quantized, that follows uh, from the fact that the, um, the, um, the, uh, so the motion is really, so vortices are only allowed at the uh, positions where density is zero, that means that when psi is zero and continuity of phase uh, uh, makes a requirement, this this the circulation, the loss circulation, once we go around these points, uh, it has to be multiple of uh, a certain quantum, right? Uh, and uh, uh, it's plus or minus, uh, could be arbitrary multiple of uh, uh, four pi, and, uh, and uh, usually the, uh, so the quantum with multiple charge are uh, structurally unstable, and so the uh, plus or minus uh, four, four pi uh, vortices have a, a a more fundamental uh, appearance in uh, the dynamics. And waves, I mean, there are ma a, a, a various different waves. Well, first of all, so there are waves, it's uh, nonlinear Schrodinger in the limit of small nonlinearity goes to linear Schrodinger. And we know that linear Schrodinger and from uh, basic quantum mechanics course has a, a wave solution, right? So this is the Broglie ma matter wave, right? And so this is kind of the waves we are going to be concentrating on today. Uh, but in addition to that, just to mention, there could be uh, the, there's also waves around condensate states. They are they are uh, uh, Bogolubov sound waves, and also if there are vortices, vortices can bend and some spiral waves propagating along them are known as Kelvin waves. So that's what we're not going to consider today. So uh, the uh, now that's a similarity with classical fluids, and but the difference is that unlike classical vortices, quant quantized vortices can be created or annihilated without dissipation, right? In, in fluids, you would need viscosity for that. And here, they can do it without viscosity. And that is that little tiny difference that we saw a quantum pressure term actually makes that possible. Uh, uh, and uh, so, uh, therefore, vortices can reconnect. And uh, during that, they will emit Kelvin and sound waves. And uh, uh, so, Vortices uh, uh, can, uh, uh, by motion, they can create sound, they can scatter sound, they can absorb sound, and so it's complicated in general dynamics. It's very complicated. So, uh, uh, so and generally, turbulence uh, in such a system uh, uh, contains a mixture of such motions, such processes. But in the limiting cases, uh, the, you can have uh, uh, pu pure vortex or pure wa wave turbulence, depending on whether we have strong or weak nonlinearity limits. In particular, it, uh, to be more precise, there is a Helian length, which characteristic size or density Helian and, and quantized vortex. If it is small compared to the uh, mean distance between the vortices, then you, you can consider your system as a tangle of qua qua uh, quantized vortices. And so the you saw the uh, uh, you saw this picture perhaps in George's talk last week, and you will see um, uh, no, no doubt again in uh, a, a, a Nic a, a Nicholas uh, uh, talk uh, later in this week. That's their work. Uh, so that's not what I'm going to be talking about. I'm going to be talking about a different limit where actually the Helian length is so big that all the vortices overlap. And in fact, they don't have uh, uh, dynamical significance whatsoever. You can't describe the uh, dynamics of vortex lines just in terms of vortex positions, right? And this is the case of uh, wave turbulence. So the fundamental object in this case is wave, not a vortex, right? So the, uh, and the one that we're going to consider is precisely when nonlinearity is small. So and uh, so a matter wave has this solution uh, with a frequency equal to k squared, uh, wave number squared, so which is the classical, uh, I mean, non-relativistic uh, uh, relation between energy and momentum. Uh, 
So the Schrodinger equation is non-relativistic. Non and now if you go to a weakly nonlinear theory, we're in domain of wave turbulence, especially. So wave turbulence, what is it? It's a non-equilibrium statistical si a system of many random interactive waves. It's important that there are many, the whole broad uh, band spectrum of them, so the uh, and so and then uh, and they're interacting with each other, exchanging energy, right? And it's a number of uh, uh, text by now uh, exists, some classical older text of uh, Zaharov et al. Now mine was uh, 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 following that. Then the some text with experiment uh, with a number of papers on uh, uh, reviews, on, uh, both theoretical and experimental. And finally, Sebastian Gaultier wrote something more physics oriented uh, 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 very recently. So, uh, I'm not going to uh, go in, uh, uh, in details and uh, uh, reproduce what's written in these books. Uh, uh, just I'm going to just give you some sort of uh, outcome so that the, the fundamental object in wave, uh, uh, in wave turbulence is the wave spectrum, right? Wave spectrum is I go to Fourier space, I go to uh, Fourier transform my, uh, my fi uh, complex field psi, and then I normalize it in such a way that, uh, uh, so L is the uh, uh, size of the box, so it's a classical set of periodic box, the size of which I tend to infinity. D is a dimension of space. And so in, in order for, for my uh, spectrum to stay uh, finite uh, when a box size goes to infinity and the energy density, of en uh, energy density in physical space is constant, so I have to normalize it in this way. It's just the property of Fourier transform. And then, uh, and then, uh, if I do that, uh, so after assuming a weak nonlinearity using that fact, uh, separating times linear and nonlinear time scales, and also assuming that statistics of waves uh, is uh, uh, of uh, phases and amplitudes are random. So I arrived the, at this uh, description, this closure uh, uh, called the uh, wave kinetic equation. So which is actually the uh, analog, quantum analog of uh, Boltzmann, uh, uh, Boltzmann equation for, uh, uh, in, uh, for colliding uh, atoms in a gas. Uh, and in fact, uh, uh, both this one and Boltzmann equation for gas are, are limiting cases of the same quantum Boltzmann equation de derived by uh, Nordheim in the beginning of 20th and the last century, right? So what is uh, similarities? You see two delta functions, right? like uh, the uh, conservation of momentum and uh, energy of waves in this case. So you have uh, two waves colliding, producing two other waves, and uh, K is the momentum of wave is conserved, and uh, omega is uh, 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 energy of waves is conserved. But the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the shape of the kernel is different from Boltzmann equation. So, uh, ah, and, uh, and then, of course, uh, what's uh, very important to emphasize to make connection to all that uh, t uh, turbulence, of uh, vortex turbulence that uh, you've heard about and uh, will hear about uh, more later, that such field contains a lot of uh, zeros of psi. So as such, formally, it contains a lot of vortices, a lot of, especially if the spectrum is small scale, right? But they are all so-called ghost vortices. So they don't have dynamical uh, identity. So they don't move each other. So they are just zeros of a wave field. So uh, uh, whereas waves w uh, uh, do satisfy this equation, that's a, that is the uh, s uh, fundamental um, uh, property uh, of such systems. So that's a limit when the healing length is bigger than mean distance between such ghost vortices, the opposite one to vortex turbulence. Right, okay, so, uh, okay, um, uh, and now I'm going to really to some uh, basics, okay, so I, I don't, uh, um, I, I was kind of sp uh, uh, split minded uh, about that, uh, uh, whether I should or not, uh, but uh, um, I guess, for break, uh, uh, during breakfast, I asked someone, do, do, uh, do, uh, do you guys know how to derive Kalmagorov spectrum? So it turns out not everybody knows. Um, and I thought, what well, that might not hurt So if, uh, if I do that. Besides, 
Um, uh, this is a good uh, technique. Uh, but uh, when I met Beranger on a, on a boat in '91 in Russia, right? So she used it uh, to identify KGB agents, right? So she she asked two guys whether uh, how, uh, whether they can derive Kolmogorov spectrum, right? And she got them, right? So they were exactly the, uh, the <laughs> yeah. So they they would have to be removed from the boat, you know. After that, they they compromised themselves. No, 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 three. I saw two. Well, okay, maybe two, two or thre three. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Anyway, so the uh, so if you don't know this, uh, so you will learn that, and uh, it will be a good technique for you for later, right? Okay, in in case you need it, right? So um, okay, so just uh, of course you you, uh, you you all of you saw that, but just to remind, what's the Basic concepts of turbulence is uh, so of the fundamental one is uh, starts from Richardson, perhaps before Richardson, but uh, I mean I guess that he put it uh, in such a uh, nice way first that the turbulence consists of uh, kind of self-similar structure, right? Well, Richardson, in fact, uh, 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 another thing uh, he's known for is fractals, of course, the 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 length of the coast of England. That's the famous uh, question. What is it? Infinite, right? So it has fractal dimension. And so he was into fractal, and he thought of uh, uh, turbulence motion as a fractal. And uh, so in self-similar way, so the energy, so suppose you inject it at some large uh, uh, scales, vortices, and then they break up due to mutual interactions into smaller and smaller and smaller ones, bypassing the whole energy through, like this uh, schematic control. And until viscosity acts on a very small uh, vortices because it has sharp gradients and therefore in Navier-Stokes equation Laplace and Chorum is high, and yet you can form a steady state uh, picture, right? And then uh, 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 mm, to compare that to wave turbulence, right? Uh, th uh, that's precisely what turbulence is in wave turbulence, is that similar, peak, uh, similar uh, uh, processes occur there, except now instead of vortices you have waves, longer waves break up in a shorter and shorter waves, passing the energy down. Okay, and the, the description of them is the subject of wave turbulence, right? And so in the physical space, uh, motion from large scale to small scale corresponds to motion from small wave numbers to large wave numbers, right? And to that, um, uh, the, uh, the uh <coughs> fundamental object that is uh, uh, considered in turbulence is energy spectrum, which is just the Fourier transform of the second correlator of velocity field. Uh, and uh, if we uh, very often uh, turbulence is uh, theoretically considered isotropic and homogeneous, in which case uh, the spectrum is a uh, function of only of a modulus uh, 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 k. And so because of that, uh, angular variable is redundant, and we can integrate it out uh, and consider description in terms of one-dimensional energy spectrum, right? And because there is no angular dependence, uh, we, we integrate over the sphere of radius k, and, uh, and it gives just the, uh, uh, this uh, area of the sphere of uh, uh, k, and so you have a relation between 1D and 3D spectrum by 2 pi k squared, right? So the um, uh, uh, spectrum is defined in such a way so that if that Fourier transform, if you integrate both sides, right, at, uh, uh, take difference in the correlator equal to zero, so that uh, will give me just the integral of uh, um, uh, of the spectrum. And so you see that the mean kinetic energy in fluid is equal to the integral of the spectrum over wave number spectrum uh, over the wave numbers. And so you see that energy represents the distribution of energy over wave numbers, right? By by this, it's a density. Now it's uh, interesting that from this relation you can immediately deduce the dimension of the uh, energy spectrum, right? 
So it's the dimension of energy uh, of density uh, to, uh, of uh, velocity squared L squared over T squared, plus another uh, times another dimension of uh, L, right? So it makes L uh, cube over T uh, squared, right? So um, and uh, so in Kolmogorov's famous assumption is that. The the spec and Kolmogorov and Obuchov actually. I mean, Obuchov was uh, the uh, PhD student of Kolmogorov, and uh, uh, and they wrote two independent papers in '91, right? Uh, so, uh, sorry, in '41. Uh, there are two uh, people. Uh, people usually cite Kolmogorov '41, right? But Obuchov wrote '41. In fact, five thirds is an Obuchov paper, not Kolmogorov. Kolmogorov is uh, uh, did uh, uh, physical space. So it's kind of interesting uh, communication between uh, PhD advisor and, P uh, and PhD student that they write two independent papers and with the same result, right? Okay. Uh, and uh, so and, uh, uh, this uh, basic assumption is that the spectrum is independent on the way we force or dissipate the system if the force and scale and, and dissipation scale uh, are well separated in scale space. And all that uh, matters is the flux of uh, uh, energy through scales, right? Eps uh, uh, epsilon. And so this is a definition of the flux in, in uh, in, um, uh, continuity equation for energy in k-space, right? And from definition, from this definition, you see uh, density. Uh, the um, dimension of flux is equal to dimension of energy divided by time multiplied by L. And so, therefore, from a dimension of energy spectrum, we we'll get dimension of the flux like this. And now there is only one way you can construct dimension of E out of dimension of epsilon and K, right? There's no other uh, quantities are available. And so, uh, and this uh, gives you the famous uh, Kolmogorov uh, Obuchov spectrum minus 5 thirds. And so a constant C, of course, is not determined by such a dimensional analysis. And actually, it's not determined by anything else at all, because it's uh, uh, anything beyond the dimensional analysis is extremely difficult, theoretically, right? Uh, one can only use experiment and, and a numerical experiment. And you get, you get the constant close to 1.6 in many different uh, systems. <coughs> so. Two-dimensional turbulence is also very relevant uh, to us, as we'll see uh, a little bit later, because it c contains two invariants. Same as a uh, 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 Gross-Petersky system, we had particles and uh, energy. Here, 2D turbulence has energy and entropy. Entropy related to conservation, Lagrangian conservation of artists along fluid paths. So. And uh, in terms of the energy, uh, 1D energy spectrum that we introduced, okay, vorticity is density different from uh, energy density by factor of k squared, which is um, uh, uh, fundamentally important for obtaining the directions of the cascades, so-called dual cascade argument by introduced by Fjordov and 51, uh, 53. Uh, so namely that uh, the uh, 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 that the inverse cascade of energy a direct cascade of uh, uh, entropy so in this argument okay so that uh, let me again very briefly remind you that so uh, suppose we force at uh, some force in scale and we can dissipate only at scale at uh, a wave number much less than the force in scale or much a wave number much greater than force in scale so if we uh, introduce uh, uh, energy at rate epsilon, so we will then uh, introduce entropy at the rate k squared uh, f epsilon, just because of that k squared factor we discussed, a ratio between the two densities, right? But then uh, let's uh, assume by contradiction that the um, um so I assume that the uh, con contradiction uh, that the energy is dissipated at high wave numbers, uh, k plus, uh, uh, is, uh, at the rate similar to the injection rate epsilon, right? Then again, at the from the same k squared factor, we see that the entropy must be dissipated at, s at, at the rate k squared epsilon, right? 
which is much greater than kf epsilon, right? The because k plus is assumed to be much greater than kf, right? Okay, uh, which is, uh, as we know, uh, is uh, eta. So we see that uh, we arrive at the conclusion that the entropy must be dissipated at the rate much greater uh, than the rate at which we introduce it in the system. That's impossible. That's a contradiction, right? In steady state, it's impossible. And so we say then that the most of uh, energy must be dissipated at, uh, at uh, low wave numbers, and that is the uh, that is the inverse transfer of energy. In the same, exactly the same symmetrical fashion, if we assume that entropy is dissipated at k minus, uh, we will have a contradiction. So all the energy has to go to um, k plus. So it has to be like a like on this picture, energy will have to go here, entropy has to go uh, over here. And uh, so, uh, then, uh, you, uh, you, uh, then uh, you can also derive a spectrum, uh, spectra corresponding to 3D turbulence. The, the one corresponding to the uh, cascade of energy is exactly the same argument of Kolmogorov. But the constant can be different, and it is indeed different in, uh, 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 in as follows from numerics in 2D turbulence than in 3D turbulence. So it turns out to be six. So it's like uh, four times bigger, right? So, um, and we can obtain the spectrum corresponding to direct cascade of entropy uh, by similar argument by, uh, by uh, noting that the dimension of the flux of entropy is k squared uh, times dimension of flux of energy and then uh, 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 length factor fun cancels and we have only time dimension one or two cube which immediately uh, gives us this uh, Kreichen spectrum right Kreichen spectrum with direct uh, entropy cascade so uh, now let's come back to wave turbulence right the uh, as I told you, there are two conserved quantities, energy and uh, particle density. And so omega here is uh, equal to k squared in GP uh, context system, right? The frequency. But you see the same k squared as we had in uh, fjord of argument, dual cascade argument. And so we just one-to-one -one correspond mapping of this argument onto this system, and we get immediately... Uh, exactly the same argument, dual cascade behavior in, uh, in, uh, in both Einstein condensates, right? So the in wave turbulence. Uh, so, uh, but interesting thing that energy, so but that actually, so here we have inverse cascade of wave action or, or number of particles in our case, uh, and direct cascade of energy. This is because actually the en 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 uh, we have swapping places. So the energy actually corresponds to entropy of 2D turbulence because of k square factor and a number of particles to energy in 2D turbulence, right? So that's why energy in this case cascade directly. So it's, uh, it's particles that can cascade inversely. So what does it mean in uh, in, con uh, con in the BC context? It actually means some, some uh, very uh, nice picture. It's a non-equilibrium Bose-Einstein condensation, right? So here's a, a, a cartoon that uh, from uh, uh, my paper with Yuri Wolf and uh, Rob West in '93. Uh, so, so suppose you have uh, BC in uh, in a um, uh, you put it in a, in a trap, uh, and you put it somewhere in the middle, middle energy, uh, uh, middle excitation levels, right? And then the inverse energy cascade will correspond to a motion toward the uh, ground state to smaller momenta, and that will be a non-equilibrium uh, condensation process. And energy will move to the higher levels, uh, uh, higher momenta and higher energies, until if the trap has a finite height, Right? Actually, nobody was discussing at that time uh, uh, traps with finite height. Uh, everybody was talking about uh, 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 parabolic traps, right? So that's, I guess, we, we were, you know, that's what, but we suggested just to uh, have such a nice picture. So th uh, that 
you lose energy and that will be dissipation right so the it's evaporation process right you like from a cup of t uh, uh, tea you lose hot molecules right and uh, it gets uh, cooler and so in this uh, uh, quite recently that was actually exp uh, implemented experimentally uh, this uh, we, we did not make a big deal out of that uh, final size of the but apparently <coughs> this was a key uh, uh, feature of this work uh, uh, of Navon Natal that the, the uh, 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 call, call they called it uh, synthetic dissipation mechanism, right? So they, they implemented the uh, so that the uh, trap has a finite depth and, and so that they can implement if they shake a trap so and then uh, it, uh, uh, particles escape at high momenta, they can implement the uh, quasi steady state, right? And they checked what, uh, what it would look like. And, this was, uh, and the trap was also implemented in such a way that it's flat inside. It's all to feed the, uh, the theoretical setups in order to check wave turbulence. And, it, and they did obtain it, and I'll tell you that in a, in, uh, in a <coughs> uh, slightly later. Now, uh, just like in a, um, a hydrodynamic turbulence, there are power low scaling solutions uh, here. But what's interesting, uh, and they're called Kolmogorov uh, Zaharov spectra, right? So just because uh, Zaharov found them in, uh, uh, in his PG thesis in 65. And uh, somehow th he called them Kalmogorov, Kalmogorov spectra of uh, wave turbulence, he called them. Okay, and uh, so people decided to call them Kalmogorov Zaharov. So Kalmogorov, of course, has, except for analogy, uh, nothing to do with deriving them. <coughs> but um, what's interesting, so that in the wave turbulence, they are uh, exact, they, they sometimes at least, they are exact solutions of the turbulence uh, of, uh, of uh, wave kinetic equations. So they have a more rigorous status, right? Whereas in, uh, in uh, hydrodynamic turbulence, they're just dimensional analysis and then you can have closures, but they're very approximate and so on and so forth. In wave turbulence, you derive uh, more or less systematically, uh, rigorously, uh, wave kinetic equation and you get uh, exact uh, uh, solutions. And this is good because you can study them further. You can study their properties such as uh, 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 um, stability, for example, of them, whether they are realized or not. And how, how do we obtain them? The, uh, uh, of course, we can, this, uh, we can obtain them as solutions of uh, the uh, wave kinetic equation. Uh, but before we do that, we, we obtain them uh, uh, dimensionally in a quite a similar way to uh, uh, what was done by Kolmogorov and his argument. So now again, we uh, write uh, our energy in K space as in continuity form, right? Now, now P is a flux of energy, and uh, uh, remember it was epsilon in uh, its usual notation in uh, hydrodynamic turbulence epsilon. In wave turbulence, flux of energy is P. Right, um, I just change my notation as I go along. Right, so I have to, of course, because it's 1D spectrum, I have to uh, multiply by, uh, uh, by a geometrical factor, right? I'm, I'm integrating out, uh, I'm, I'm integrating out the angular variable, right? This is four pi squared in 3D case, okay? And so, and multiply by omega k because, uh, 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 this is k squared, so the uh, uh, density of energy and, pa and uh, uh, particles is uh, given by uh, frequency, right? That's just as uh, in usual Planck's relation. Uh, uh, so energy is equal to h bar omega n, right? N number of part uh, uh, quanta. So um, uh, then, okay, so dimensional argument goes like this. So I need dimension of P. It's going to be different from uh, what I had had dynamic turbulence because I have additional dimensional parameters given by wave uh, properties of the system. But I can get it from the kinetic equation. So from the kinetic equation, there must be integral over here. Um, so I get, uh, uh, you, you see, so I, I plug in, power law spectrum, k to a, a nu. 
And so what I have on the right-hand side of the kinetic equation is uh, uh, k to power of 3 uh, nu, right? That gives me that factor, 3 nu. Uh, and then uh, I have uh, three integrations, each of them d-dimensional, right? So I have 3d, uh, and then uh, uh, delta function in k takes away uh, 1d, and delta of omega has dimension is 1 over omega. So in the end, you get the, the uh, dimension of uh, uh, energy flux uh, as k to power 3d plus uh, 3 eta, and so, and if now I follow in uh, Kalmagorov type uh, argument in uh, Zakharov, I assume that P must be independent of K so that I have a steady state, but with constant uh, flux, right? So uh, I put that to zero and I get exponent. And this is, uh, this is the uh, Kalmagorov-Zakharov direct cascade exponent uh, in our case. And uh, then I can use a uh, similar argument for, uh, for the other invariant, for, for the number of particles, right? Now I write my uh, uh, kinetic equation in, in terms of conservation of particles, continuity equation, and introduce particle flux. And again, by balancing dimensions, I get dimension of the flux. I put it uh, exponent to zero, so constant flux of Q of uh, particles, and I get the second exponent. So that will be an inverse cascade range, right? So uh, the uh, problem is with such dimensional derivation, we, we don't know uh, whether the fundamental property we assume about turbulence uh, is uh, locality is satisfied. What is locality? It's the same as in Kalmogorov uh, hydrodynamic turbulence. It's assuming that the uh, scales uh, uh, are inter uh, deeply in the inertial range interacting only with close by scales so that they are not affected that much by the way turbulence is produced or dissipated, right? And so in uh, terms of uh, wave turbulence, you it has mathematical uh, formulation. The collision, int uh, the, the uh, integral that defining the fluxes uh, must uh, converge. Only then it will be a rigorous mathematical solution. And that can be checked. And uh, so one checks that, it turns out inverse cascade is nice, so it, uh, it, uh, it's uh, uh, local. But uh, the uh, forward cascade of energy actually corresponds to uh, marginally, logarithmically divergent uh, flux, energy flux, and so it must be corrected. And so these uh, physicists use this log correction, um, but in fact, uh, sort of some heuristic argument, but in fact it can be put uh, put in a, uh, on a, on a, uh, rigorous footing, and that I'm going to uh, tell now a little bit beyond the um, dimensional analysis, a little bit of more rigorous uh, uh, stuff. So uh, I can reformulate my kinetic equation in in terms of energy. Not a big deal, just changing the variable from uh, uh, k to uh, omega equal to k squared. And that's already angle averaged, right? So I don't have angles, so it's only uh, scalar frequencies here. So um, that's the uh, equation, how it looks like. And then in, in, uh, in terms of uh, frequency, num uh, particles and energy uh, invariants uh, uh, look in the following way, right? So they have... Uh so I can uh, then write uh, the particle and energy balance equations, um, right? Write them as continuity equation in, in uh, omega space, right? So this is for particle density, which is in these parentheses, and this is for energy density. And if I do that, okay, so just by as I do that, uh, uh, I, I find that uh, uh, definition of particle flux uh, and uh, energy flux in terms of the uh, right-hand side of the kinetic equation is defined uh, via uh, the following integrals, right? I have to, because of these derivatives here, you see I have to integrate, right? So, uh, and then after I substitute, then I substitute the power law spectrum. So this power law spectrum is not exactly st is corresponding to steady state exponent, 
I have to step away from it a little bit because I have some uncertainty uh, 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 due to the uh, fact that the spectrum is stationary. So I will have to consider it in terms of the limits, right? I, it's just an arbitrary x. And then uh, I, substitu I substitute that uh, in a collision integral. And then uh, I go into variables q, which has uh, normalized to omega. Omega is is outside in the street. It's uh, uh, omega, uh, the external variable with respect to the integral. It's not variable of integration, right? So, uh, so omegas I take out of the integral so that the uh, so that the remaining part, uh, which is written here, is omega independent, right? And so I get this result. So all the omega dependencies is only in this power law factor, right? So uh, then, uh, then I do the following thing. I, I, this is how you get rigorously the uh, uh, KZ spectra. So you do it via the uh, uh, so-called Zaharov transformation. So Zaharov transformation in that uh, integral i uh, that I showed, you, you do just the, the this uh, sort of uh, rational kind of substitutions in uh, three different parts of the integral um, uh, corresponding to respective areas of integration. And, as, uh, and, and I kind of map the, uh, the uh, these integrals for this area and this integral for this area onto just one single area, which is a triangle in the, in the, in the Q space, right? Just to find a finer triangle. And when I do that, the uh, the integral remains mostly invariant, apart it acquires some additional power factor. And so I get this f uh, these parentheses as a, as a result. And you see, then I can uh, find a a stationary solutions by putting these parentheses to zero. And by the way, I could have, of course, put uh, that parentheses to zero uh, in the beginning, but that would be trivial. That would be just thermodynamic equilibrium with, uh, 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 with uh, um, flux as equal to zero. These are not the constant flux solutions that we're looking for. But these ones give you KZ spectra, right? So you, you put when is this uh, bracket equal to zero? It's, it's obviously zero when y is zero, right? So then you have one plus one minus one minus one. And this corresponds to the uh, particle ca uh, cascade. And it, ca it also is, uh, um, uh, it, it's also, <coughs> um, zero when y is equal to one because of this delta function, right? Uh, because the, the, uh, what's in the parentheses is exactly the argument of this delta function. Uh, so then, um, then uh, what I can do, I can uh, numerically, uh, so did I, do, 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 okay. So um, I can cal calculate numerically the uh, integral uh, before the integration, uh, bef before such the current transformation and after. And I can see, so the, uh, and study convergence of the uh, integral. And I can see the convergence actually occurs uh, for uh, this integral uh, for the values from one to three halves uh, and inside of it, the, uh, the values of uh, integral uh, after Zaharov transformation and before Zaharov transformation, they coincide. So if the, uh, so this is because uh, Zaharov transformation does not change the value of the integral uh, if it is convergent, but it can change, so it becomes non-identity transformation if it is uh, uh, divergent. And it's a very funny thing is happening that corresponds to the, in, uh, to the forward cascade of energy exponent, that the original integral is actually convergent, has finite value. Uh, after the Zaharov transformation, it's zero by, by definition, right? But it's convergent not to, not to zero, so it's not given a steady state solution, right? So therefore, it's not, an, an, it's not a solution of, uh, it's not a steady state solution. Whereas the other exponent corresponding to uh, seven, uh, six, so the, the inverse cascade of particles is perfectly fine. Okay, so it's, uh, 
it's zero and it's uh, it's uh, deeply inside the convergence of uh, integral region so um and then uh, uh so <coughs> uh then what do we do so well let's start with um, first of all inverse cascade since it's a better so it's a it's a good uh, local spectrum so uh why uh, what uh, what we're doing here is better than dimensional analysis because we can get the kolmogorov zakharov constant we can get prefactor constant you see so the it's important actually the, uh, uh, because when you let's say have numerics or experiment and you're looking at the uh, at the spectrum there's many many different ways you can get the same exponent but if in addition you have test that the prefactor constant uh, is checked and, and, and verified then it's much more a much stronger test right and so this is what we are going to do here so we um, uh, we formulate the uh, uh, so uh, from this definition of uh, uh, the flux we plug in that uh, 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 expression that we obtained um, uh, before in terms of the power law spectrum uh, and we get the following uh, uh, expression and and what's interesting that the uh, so the, uh, uh, that this expression uh, when x becomes a kz solution right so then by definition so i must be zero right uh, but also the denominator is zero so we have l'hopital uncertainty and that's why I told you that we have to step away from uh, from sta a stationary solution in order to resolve uh, the value of the flux. So we do it, and we have derivative of, of that with respect to x via L'Hopital rule, right? And for calculating this derivative is easy. We get this integral, and in fact, it's a it's a table integral. Mathematica finds for us the following number. It's an analytical solution. Of course, it's a uh, not very pleasant uh, form, right? It's hypergeometric function, uh, of, uh, but uh, but you can compute it to any uh, accuracy uh, if you like, and and that gives you this exponent that then you can check numerically or experimentally. <coughs> so this is as far as the uh, inverse cascade spectrum, or the good spectrum is concerned. Now. What what do we do about the forward cascade, which turned out to be uh, log divergent? So what we do, we actually say, let's introduce a cutoff at a <coughs> at a, a spectrum uh, does not go to all the way to zero. It's a direct cascade. It only starts at uh, force and frequency, right? So let's introduce the cutoff then in the, uh, in, in our spectrum. So our spectrum. Uh, is power law, but only up to uh, uh, that cutoff frequency. Then, if we we can uh, analytically calculate this integral, <coughs> and uh, and we get the uh, the following expression for the flux, and you see the log factor, something that you get <coughs> uh, people got before from hand waving argument of uh, a kind of a la uh, Kreitzmann. So, but now you can get it uh, asymptotically. Uh <coughs> Uh, asymptotically, uh, this is expression valid for omega much greater than uh, omega f. And so, uh, so when when you do that, so it turns out that we uh, the, uh, we we have to correct our uh, uh, solution, direct cascade solution, with a log factor, um, and. <coughs> uh, and uh, so, uh, and y we get the following result. So that was without log factor k minus three, and th this uh, log to pow power minus y third. Um, what's uh, what's good about that? Uh, why is it better than hand waving argument? Because you get also exactly the value of the uh, 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 constant again. You, you get the value of the constant, refactor constant. And another thing what's happening here, uh, you, you notice that uh, this expression actually goes to infinity uh, when uh, k, uh, k, uh, k equal to kf, right? So this means that the spectrum, so if I had a log-log scale, right? So uh, my, my spectrum was k minus 3, right? Uh, and now all of a sudden at k, kf, it shoots to infinity, right? Like this. 
but uh, as I told you, this expression uh, is uh, only derived asymptotically for uh, uh, k much greater than kf. That's the only way you can uh, 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 justify such a derivation. Um, uh, but the fact that it's uh, steeper than uh, the spectrum is actually quite interesting because uh, um, I'll tell you uh, in just uh, in just a, a minute <coughs> uh, how it goes about. But before, let uh, let me introduce numerics, right? So what we did in that uh, work wi uh, with Yin, Georgiou, and Boris, <coughs> we computed, uh, 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 we did DNS or Gross-Pitevsky equation at uh, resolution uh, uh, two, uh, um, uh, 124 cube, a pretty decent resolution. And this is a result for, uh, and, and then we did also, we computed also kinetic equation uh, for the same setup. And uh, uh, so, and we computed the results with the theoretical predictions. And so for the inverse cascade, which is, I remind you, local, uh, the results sho shown here. So this is for, for, uh <coughs> for uh, Gross-Pitaevsky simulation, right, DNS, and this is for kinetic equation. And this is a compensated spectrum. It's compensated to, uh, to uh, direct cascade spectrum, including log correction. And then you see the, uh, it, uh, and, and including the constant. And you see the perfect agreement, uh, well, actually it's log scale, so agreement within 5%, but uh, nearly perfect. So the, uh, we get uh, agreement for both uh, uh, a direct numerical simulation and, uh, and uh, um, kinetic equation. And this is very rare, not only in wave turbulence, but in turbulence uh, uh, as, as well, when, uh, the theory put to test not just to the, ex the uh, power law exponent, but the constant as well. So you see it constants here. So what I show here, in, uh, uh, in addition to uh <coughs> the, the DNS, two things. Spectrum which is not log corrected, right, here. You see obviously it's, it doesn't fit as good. But also another spectrum with uh, exponent 3.5. Where did I get that exponent? Well, this is the exponent that was reported in experiments of Navon et al. Uh, in uh, both einstein conditions. The trap that I showed you, the, uh, that they, they shook uh, Cambridge experiment. <coughs> and so they, they claimed that it was the base, uh, base fit and they did not know how to explain that uh, uh, three-point exp uh, uh, exponent. It turns out that actually, well, the, uh, if we uh, take the numerics and uh, superimpose with our log correction, uh, the, the fit with log is uh, uh, actually much better. So the answer is that that lo log makes spectrum steeper and on a limiting inertial range, it does look like 3.5. But in, in reality, you know, it, it is log. Uh, so, uh, so uh, sorry, that was uh, the, uh, did, I, did I tell you about inverse cascade? That wasn't inverse cascade, that was forward cascade uh, with log correction, of course, right? So, um, spectrum. But now the, the inverse cascade, so for the inverse cascade, we do the same thing, but now we are forcing the system at high uh, uh, frequencies uh, for both uh, DNS and um, the uh, uh, kinetic equation. And we look how spectrum propagates to lower frequencies, right? And again, you see the good uh, uh, agreement in the inertial range. So you see this vertical line here. So this vertical line is where weak nonlinearity breaks. We test, as we go along, we test scale by scale, where we satisfy the condition that the uh, uh, linear term is bigger than nonlinear term. Uh, in physical space, I remind you, it corresponds to uh, where healing length, uh, uh, where k, k times healing length becomes of order one. So healing length is actually uh, 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 wave number corresponds to healing length is uh, denoted here by k 
uh, sub uh, xi, right? So helium limit xi. So it's uh, it's here. It's uh, uh, so it does not have to. Therefore, the theory uh, uh, weak wave turbulence should not be satisfied in this range because it becomes strongly nonlinear. And so something else is happening here. Some sort of uh, infrared bottleneck. Okay, but what's most important is in the range where uh, we expect prediction to be satisfied, where we have uh, weak nonlinearity, right? So the we have a, a perfect match uh, in both uh, kinetic and uh, um, the uh, direct uh, kinetic equation, direct numerical simulation uh, or gross Gross-Piersky equation. So okay, so I'll uh, as a, I'll put summary for you so that. Um, the uh, uh, well, first kind of basic main message for you was that the nonlinear kinetic motions, motions of waves in uh, both Einstein and condensate, have properties uh, properties of turbulence, namely cascades uh, of energy and uh, particles, and the scalings of Kolmogorov-like uh, type, uh, namely Kolmogorov-Zaharov. And this is uh, w now well justified both uh, theoretically and numerically. And actually, to grand extent, uh, 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 experimentally, as far as forward cascade is con uh, concerned. So, uh, but um, the, uh, the uh, inverse cascade is still waiting for its experiment experimental implementation. And me speaking for uh, uh, the um, uh, experimentalists like uh, uh, Vanderlei Banyata. He he's quite interested in that uh, problem. He said he could. Uh, so the problem is how do you uh, remove particles at low momenta? And he said actually there is a such a technique. Okay, so the, the it can it can be done. And so and because direct cascade spectrum is better, it's local. I think it's a very pr uh, important and would be very interesting to implement this state uh, uh, numerically. Finally. I uh, so would like to acknowledge. So this is uh, a, a work done within uh, 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 Simon's Foundation project that we we have now uh, uh, for four years and has been extended for another three years. So uh, and of course the uh, uh, numerics uh, were only possible due to uh, grant from uh, uh, Gen C from so, uh, from clusters at Gen C. Thank you very much.